the item, <clears throat> the item this month that we'd like to focus on is the long-term goals and progress measures. And of course, um, as you'll recall, we had long-term goals and progress measures with No Child Left Behind. They were referred to as the annual measurable objectives. Um, this legislation also has that same feature, not using that language. But again, for all students and for all student groups, um, we have to provide goals around the measures of test scores, which would be integrated in the course, the four-year cohort graduation rate, and possibly, um, if North Carolina decide to, decided to, to also do that for our extended rate, which in North Carolina um, currently is five-year, and then also the progress for English language learners. So what that means is we would have to have from an end goal in mind, if you will. With No Child Left Behind, that was by 2014, 100% of the students were um, supposed to be proficient on all the um, math and reading measures. With the ESCA flexibility waiver, we determined that we were going to reduce by one half within six years the percent of students that were not proficient on those same assessments. So the question that we have that we'll be grappling with over the next few um, couple of months uh, as we prepare the plan that we will submit to the U.S. Department of Education and that will of course be vetted with you um, as we move forward. The conversation is around where is the end goal as far as time? What is the end goal? What should be the percent of students that we expect to be proficient? And along the way, how do we measure progress so that we are reporting annually on our districts and the schools and the charter schools, their progress and meeting those independent goals each year toward that end goal at the end of the game. So that's a, a tall order. It's also very important to just remember that one of the purposes that is stated in the law is that it's very important for those goals to be ambitious and for those goals to have the long view of where we want to end up as a state. So recently at a meeting that several of us have attended in accountability, we were reminded that 2017-18, which is the first year of the implementation of the Every Student Succeeds Act, will be the kindergarten year for the class of 2030. And it kind of took our breaths away when we think about 2030 will be their graduation year. But in the conversation at that meeting, we were encouraged to think about when we are designing this state plan, to keep in mind that it's not just for the students of 2017-18, because we all have a tendency to think about right now, because everything that's happening right now is so very, very, very important. But we have to have a long view to look forward to the end game, um, looking down to 2030, which is a long time away. But that is also the perfect segue, I think, to turn the podium over to my colleague, John Pruitt, who works very much with those um, early childhood um, <laughs> students and trying to make sure that they are prepared to graduate in 2030. So with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Pruitt. Thank you. 